Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Last week we went through the wonderful story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam together. This story is a special one. It is filled with gems and words of wisdom. Let's together look at the great lessons we can all learn from the story. Allah has designated a complete surah in the Quran containing a complete account of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam from the beginning till the end. All other stories of the prophets are scattered throughout the Quran. Surah Yusuf was revealed in Mecca a few years before the Hijrah in the year of sorrow. It was the year when our Prophet ﷺ lost his wife Khadija anha and his uncle Abi Talib. And when he visited the city of Taif, which was the most difficult day for him. At this point in time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Yusuf. This surah was meant to console and comfort our Prophet ﷺ. The story shows how much pain Yusuf ﷺ endured during his lifetime and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him through every difficulty. We learn from the story that good dreams are a blessing and being able to interpret a dream is a special knowledge blessed only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya'qub alayhi salam forbade Yusuf alayhi salam from telling his brothers about his dream. We learn here that not all information about our blessings must be shared, as this can cause people to become jealous and unhappy. It may also be the cause of being inflicted with the evil eye. This is why one should refrain from posting endless pictures of what he eats, what he owns, where he goes on social media. We understand from the accounts of the story that Shaitan is always eager to cause problems between people, especially family members. He caused jealousy and hatred in the hearts of Yusuf alayhi salam's brothers. We also see that the brothers tried to lessen the pain of their sin of acting upon their jealousy by pinning the blame on their father about not equal in his love towards them. One must learn to be accountable for his own actions and revise his own intentions about any deed. Do you think being poor is an excuse to steal or to stay out of trouble? It's okay to lie? Or because you can't control your anger, you blame someone else for it? Allah will always hold every one of us to account about our own actions. The brothers thought of committing the evil act of getting rid of Yusuf alayhi salam and asking for forgiveness later. We understand that repentance before committing a sin is not true repentance. Thinking to get off the hook by sinning first and doing istighfar later is unacceptable. You cannot deliberately miss salah and make up for it later. You cannot deliberately use foul language and say sorry later. It doesn't work that way. We also see an amazing display of patience by Ya'qub at the time he lost Yusuf and knew that his sons were lying to him. He didn't lash out to his sons or let his emotions run out of control. He handled the situation with wisdom and grace, turning to Allah to heal his pain. His patience is mentioned as Subrun Jamil, beautiful patience in the Quran. Yusuf السلام, turned to Allah and acknowledged his weakness at the time where he was surrounded by the fitna and temptation of women. This is where he found his strength, by holding on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why on the day of judgment he will be among the seven people shaded by the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He feared Allah when he was invited towards sin by a woman. He chose Allah's pleasure over everything. Those who believe their love for Allah is always greater than absolutely anything else. Yusuf السلام, felt that the ultimate loss is the loss of Allah, and so he preferred to go to prison than being in a sinful atmosphere. Yusuf السلام, faced slander and was falsely accused of sin. It hurt his dignity, but despite being in prison, he didn't miss the opportunity of giving da'wah to his fellow prisoners. When they came up to him with their dreams, the first thing he discussed was the message of Islam before saying anything else. 
We see how Yusuf alayhi salam had wisdom and knowledge of planning and managing government resources. He advised the king to plan and save crops for seven years for a drought that was about to come. Even though we are unaware of what the future holds, it is always wise to plan ahead and stay organized. If I prepare and study well before my exams, I will save myself from disappointment in the future. We see a beautiful example of forgiveness in this story. When the brothers are exposed and the truth about the past became clear, while Yusuf السلام, was in a high position of authority, he chose to forgive them. He attributed their wrongdoings to the whisperings of the shaitan. What a beautiful example for us to follow. We learn Allah removes difficulty and rewards a true mu'min with better things when he holds on to his iman and remains patient. Yusuf السلام, experienced all sorts of painful setbacks like betrayal from his brothers, separation from his beloved father, fear in the dark well, humiliation of slavery, false accusation of a crime he didn't commit and the loneliness of prison. He endured all this pain with patience, taqwa, and full faith in Allah, and so he was protected and honored with a highly respectable position in society. Being blessed with power and authority only humbled Yusuf السلام, further, and he turned to Allah again thanking him for the status he gave him and the knowledge of the interpretation of dreams. Yusuf السلام, fully understood that whatever of power he was given is just a part of what actually belongs to Allah, as he is Al-Aziz. Whatever knowledge he was given was from the one who has all knowledge, Al-Alim. After acknowledging his blessings, he made a request for the hereafter. He made dua to die as a Muslim and to follow in the path of the righteous. Here we learn the beautiful etiquette of dua where we acknowledge our blessings, ask for the good of this dunya, ask for a successful akhirah, and ask for the pleasure of Allah. This famous dua is found in Surah Yusuf in the Quran. فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَنْتَ وَلِيِّ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ تَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا وَأَلْحِقْنِي بِالصَّالِحِينَ Creator of the heavens and earth, you are my protector in this world and in the hereafter. Cause me to die a Muslim and join me with the righteous. This dua is mentioned in Surah Yusuf verse 101. What a beautiful dua! So many of us were born into Islam and were given this beautiful deen without asking for it. Let's make the best of this great blessing to earn a beautiful akhirah. Until we meet again next week, inshallah, with the next wonderful story of an other great prophet, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.